Right now, Udemy is having one of their biggest sales of the year, and their courses are up to 90% off. If you don't know Udemy, they're an online learning platform with thousands of courses. So if you want to learn a new skill, now is the time because their sale is ending on August 18th. Hey there, I'm Mike Rignetta. This is Course Theater, and today we'll be discussing the theater of the absurd. Goodell? That's your cue. Goodell? Well, that's fine. Plenty of time to wait for that guy. Not a lot happens in these plays. Lights up uh, when you get around to it. What is the theater of the absurd, and how absurd is it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Very. Sometimes. It's a movement that got going in the 1950s, influenced by the events of the 40s. Because after you've come out of a world war in which millions of people were killed, maybe light comedy doesn't really do it for you anymore. The Theater of the Absurd wasn't one of those moments where everyone hung out in bars and had parties together. And maybe that's good, because some of those parties would have been dour. No, it was more of a loose style that a bunch of playwrights started writing in pretty much independently, and then one day critic Martin Eslin noticed and wrote an essay about it, and bam, a movement was born, or identified, or whatever. The Theater of the Absurd is another style that rejects realism. Absurdism, like Dadaism and Surrealism, is predicated on the idea that life doesn't really make sense. So theater shouldn't make sense either. This isn't absurd like comedy in 2018. It's more of a deeply dissatisfied, questioning kind of absurd. Plots are disordered. Nothing happens. Or if stuff does happen, it's unmotivated. Don't make meaning in the usual way. And characters aren't consistent. Mysteries don't get solved. And order doesn't get restored. Lol. Philosophically, the worldview of the theater of the absurd is similar to existentialism, probably because Aslan was influenced by Albert Camus. In The Myth of Sisyphus, Camus wrote, A world that can be explained even with bad reasons is a familiar world. But on the other hand, in a universe suddenly divested of illusions and lights, man feels an alien, a stranger. His exile is without remedy since he is deprived of the memory of a lost home or the hope of a promised land. This divorce between man and his life, the actor and his setting, is properly the feeling of absurdity. Lol. Eslin thought that the theater of the absurd could help its audience to accept life as meaningless and maybe not be so depressed about that. He wrote, it is a challenge to accept the human condition as it is, in all its mystery and absurdity, and to bear it with dignity, nobly, responsibly. Precisely because there are no easy solutions to the mysteries of existence. Because ultimately man is alone in a meaningless world. The shedding of easy solutions, of comforting illusions, may be painful, but it leaves behind it a sense of freedom and relief. And that is why, in the last resort, the theater of the absurd does not provoke tears of despair, but the laughter of liberation. Lol? There are a lot of playwrights who get labeled absurdist, including Alfred Jarry, Guillaume Apollinaire, and also the Italian playwright Luigi Parandello. King of the, it happened like this, no, it happened like that, nope, I'm never going to understand this because the world is fundamentally unknowable play. We're going to look at three other absurdist playwrights today. Jean Genet, Eugene Ionesco, and Samuel Beckett. Jean Genet was born in France in 1910 and was abandoned soon after. As a kid, he tried to run away a lot and he often stole. When he was 15, he was sent to French juvie. When he turned 18, he joined the French Foreign Legion, but was drummed out for being gay. He wandered around for a while, supporting himself with prostitution and petty theft. He was in and out of prison, and it was in prison that he began to write, completing an experimental novel, Our Lady of the Flowers, in 1944. Genet became popular with the French intellectual crowd, so when he was threatened with life imprisonment in 1949 for more theft, those intellectuals came together to petition the government to free him. And the government said, okay. Philosopher and playwright Jean-Paul Sartre was such a fan that he wrote a 700-page analysis of his life and work called Saint Genet. When Genet turned to the theater, first with the short play Death Watch, he established the themes that would fascinate him for years. 
sex, power, beauty, degradation, ritual, and theatricality itself. Most of the characters in Janae's plays are consciously playing roles that can suddenly be reversed. And with a shift in power dynamics comes a shift in sexual dynamics. Reality often shifts too, which gives the plays a disturbing, decentering quality. You can see this in The Balcony, which is set in a brothel that caters to sexual role play, and in The Blacks, in which a cast of black actors perform in whiteface. Janae died in Paris in 1986. Let's take a closer look at Janae's work by dusting off his three character 1947 drama, The Maids. Grab a mop, thought bubble. The Maids begins with a scene between a mistress and her maid, Claire. Their relationship isn't great. Madame insults Claire, and Claire bullies Madame, forcing her to wear a red dress. Claire spits at her. Then, an alarm goes off, startling both women. We realize that Madame is actually the maid, Claire, and Claire is her sister, Solange, and that this is an elaborate psychosexual game they play, taking turns as Madame. As they wait for Madame, the phone rings. It's Monsieur, Madame's lover. He's been in prison, mostly because of an anonymous letter the maids sent. Now, he's out on bail. Bad news for the maids. They're afraid he'll recognize their handwriting. They're frightened, and also they're disgusted by their own poverty and servitude. As Solange says, I want to help you. I want to comfort you, but I know I disgust you. I'm repulsive to you. And I know it because you disgust me. When slaves love one another, it's not love. Claire replies, and me, I'm sick of seeing my image thrown back at me by a mirror, like a bad smell. You're my bad smell. So, out of revenge, disgust, and in a not very sane attempt at self-preservation, Claire decides to murder Madame. Madame returns, and Claire puts sleeping pills in her tea. But before she can drink it, Solange tells her that Monsieur is free, and Madame leaves the tea untouched. The maids begin their game again, but this time it's darker, crueler and even weirder. Claire is playing Madame. She orders Solange to bring her a cup of tea. Claire lies down on Madame's bed and drinks the poisoned tea, killing herself. Thanks, Thought Bubble. That was not hygienic. While Genet based his play on an actual real-life French murder, Genet was obviously not trying to create true crime or realism. Genet's pal Sartre suggested that adolescent boys should play all of the roles as a way to enhance the unreality but with its gowns, flowers, and sadomasochistic humiliation, it's already pretty unreal. Our next absurdist is Romanian playwright Eugene Ionesco, author of deceptively simple, sometimes allegorical works like The Chairs or Rhinoceros. Ionesco was born in Romania in 1909 and moved between Romania and France several times. When Ionesco was almost 40, he decided to learn English by memorizing simple sentences. Those sentences made their way into an absurdist and sometimes silly work called The Bald Soprano. In this play, one nice couple, the Smiths, invite over another nice couple, the Martins. The Martins think that they're strangers to each other and then discover that they've been married for years. Here's an excerpt. Mrs. Martin, Bazaar, Balzac, Bazooka, Mr. Martin, Bazaar, Beau Arts, Braziers, Mr. Smith, A-E-I-O-U, 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 I. Mrs. Smith, choo-choo, 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 choo-choo-choo. The director wasn't really sure how to stage it, and initially, the play was a flop, but other writers and intellectuals championed it, yay intellectuals, and Ionesco kept going. Ionesco was influenced by Dada and the Surrealists, and a lot of his work is about a desire to access some other, better, probably unreachable world. He's best known for a cycle of plays centered on a naive everyman figure called Béranger, who pops up in different times and situations. These plays are The Killer, Rhinoceros, Exit the King, and A Stroll in the Air. Some of these plays have a more political orientation, but some don't. Béranger is always struggling with the problem of human endeavor and free will in a seemingly random universe. Inesco's plays are written in simple, sometimes even simplistic language, but that disguises serious preoccupations and serious despair, because, you know, randomness and entropy and death. Ionesco died in France in 1994. And this here is your friend and mine, Samuel Beckett. Is Beckett the greatest modernist playwright? Yes. I'm sorry, it's just a fact. His plays are weird and funny and horrifying and deeply moving. Just when you think you've got one of his plays nailed, the meanings have a way of sliding out from under you. We're big fans. Beckett was born in Ireland in 1906. After university, he moved to France to teach, where he eventually became the research assistant of James Joyce. 
Beckett wrote poems, novels, and short stories, also all great. And like Genet, he was at one point stabbed by a pimp. He also drove Andre the Giant to school on occasion. True story. During World War II, Beckett was active in the resistance, and after the war, he began his career as a playwright, typically writing in French. His best-known play is Waiting for Godot, a bleak tragicomedy from 1948 about two tramps waiting for a man who, spoiler alert, never arrives. One critic called it a play in which nothing happens. Twice. It's part vaudeville and part philosophy, and honestly, it's pretty awesome. I mean, it's made fun of as a quintessentially weird modern play for a lot of really good reasons, but it is also just a good play. Other notable Beckett plays include Endgame, Happy Days, Crap's Last Tape, and Play, because uh, there were no titles left, I guess. Beckett's plays are almost completely empty of action. The characters are barely there. The dialogue goes in circles. Every rule Aristotle ever wrote, Beckett breaks, except for the unity of place. And as we know, Aristotle never even wrote that one. Are Beckett's plays realistic? Oh, no. So why are his plays so great? They're about people trying to live in a world that doesn't make any sense. And that's, I mean, that's most of us. They're bleak, but they're also very funny and perversely humane. Even in a senseless world, we still have each other. Beckett died in 1989, and well, nothing to be done. Am I? Me too. No, not now, not now. There's work to be done. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time when we take a break from all of this existential despair and the search for meaning in a seemingly random universe. Grab your playbills and start stopping the stage door because Crash Course Theater is going to Broadway, baby. Wait, what? York says that existential despair is there too? Ah, can't get away from it. Caftan curtsy, cup of noodles curtain. Crash Course Theater is... Okay, uh, I'd like to add one more reference to Godot and then we'll very quickly uh, move on to um, look back in anger. Um, this is a Malayalam reference. You would have heard about VKN, who is a popular comic short story writer. VKN in the Kadagal and the Varayana Kadasa Maharatala. VKN is the Kinuru Rasagaramaya Charuga there. And that short story is a satirical take on Samuel Beckett. Uh, I hope my screen is visible to you. Or a bucket to Samuel and on a Kadaki VKN Kodukuna title. Or a bucket to Samuel. From the title VK in the Kadagal, uh, from the Samaharam VK in the Kadagal. And uh, it's a satirical take on the way in which we admire someone like Beckett. And uh, just give me a second, I'd like to read from the third page, but then, yeah, it's a bit slow here. Okay. Um, yeah, third page. Yeah. I hope this, this screen is visible to you. Kalavu poya uri karude kat, rand karudagal, Karnadaga sangiratil, samvadikinadana, bucketil shamu a menende, kaide 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 rimakam, and the egangam. Swayam nashtam manuri kaida tirichatuna de vere, matirand karudagalkum urivan, bandan jomakanda. Alelum, budaum natu artavanum ala, avada bara. Avi baruna baviana, kuril putana. Apol. Uru Kaida Kutti on the Karinu. Inni Mate Kaida Verilla. Tarambu Vidrina Valer Atri in Nokia Almadi. Tarambum Kaida Ulmai Bandangala Randa Gaidayan. Kutti Kaida in a Turti. Matir and the Gaidagal Tamil Parinu. In the lay E. Poreil Alarno, one nan Kedu Name Alakan Gondo another. Pine the Porelano Garbashima and the Darana. Kora Porele Novel Book Ulum Bucketadim Vichu or the Tund. Upper Molaga Kotam Meliri, Totting a paper bakal, Totangana, then a Kundangulam Varuni Vaga, Karimer in the Prayotoria, Wakurilla, Ola Padaka, you know, gibberish language in a paradina, Wakurilla, Ola Padaka, Gund, Diana, and Akadana, any of a particular pitcher. So, anyway, it goes on like that. So, if you want, you can go back and have a look at that. We'll quickly move on to look back in anger. It's already 20 24 minutes. From our scheduled time. So quickly, I'm going to Speaking about look back in anger, the first thing that you need to bear in mind, especially if you are taking notes, one thing that you need to keep in mind is the angry young man movement. So, what is this angry young man movement? It is a journalistic catchphrase 
applied to a number of british playwrights and novelists from the mid 1950s ഒരു 1950 കളുടെ പകുതി തൊട്ടുള്ള ചില ബ്രിട്ടീഷ് നാടകകൃത്തുക്കളെയും നോവലിസ്റ്റുകളെയും അഭിസംബോധന ചെയ്യാനായിട്ട് ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്ന ഒരു ടേമാണ് ആംഗ്രി യങ് മെൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ഒറിജിനലി യൂസ്ഡ് ബൈ ദ ബ്രിട്ടീഷ് ന്യൂസ് പേപ്പേഴ്സ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ദ സക്സസ് ഓഫ് ദ പ്ലേ ദാറ്റ് പ്രിസ്ക്രൈബ് ടു എസ് ജോണോസ് ബോൺസ് ലുക്ക് ബാക്ക് ഇൻ ആംഗർ ടു ഡിസ്ക്രൈബ് യങ് ബ്രിട്ടീഷ് റൈറ്റേഴ്സ് ഓവർ ദ പീരിയഡ് ഓഫ് ടൈം ഇറ്റ് ഹസ് ചേഞ്ച് ഇറ്റ്സ് മീനിങ് and has become a cliche when used more genrically to refer to a young person who strongly criticizes political and social institutions oru kalatha amidabachanda cinemagal okko northu so the angry young men of britain were a group of writers who emerged in the post war decade this group included people like harold pinter the birthday party ennu parayna oru play ezhudhi harold pinter john bryan alan silito s i l i t o e S I L L I I'm sorry S I L L I T O E then Kingsley Amis Philip Larkin John Wayne William Cooper ivare okke kurichu abhisambodhana cheyan upayogichirunna oru term aanu angry young men their political views were seen as radical sometimes even anarchic and they described social alienation of different kinds they also expressed their critical views on society as a whole criticizing certain behaviors or groups in different ways the term was rejected by most of the writers to whom it was applied arana ile ee gododa kaaratil alle absurd inde kaarathi parana pole thanne most of the angry young men writers disagreed with the label and they were of the opinion that they do not belong to that sort of a school and the less the play the play that's been prescribed to us was first staged on may 8 1956 at royal court theater london and uh, uh, it's first production was actually not financially successful but then later it gained currency also because of the you know uh, the depictions that's been there in the play ningal aa naadagam innu vaaikkiyanengil alle njan ippa kadha ningalodu churiki parayan povumbulekum ningal aa naadagam valiya sambhavam onnu alla enna reethil thona because there is nothing much that happens in the play it's a three act play that's something that you need to bear in mind at this point of time so the three act play takes place in a one bedroom flat where or owned by jimmy porter who is a protagonist jimmy or lower middle class he petta university educated aaya bari aaya alessandra kuda thamasikkuna enna kuda oru suhurthum kuda undu cliff nu parney cliff inde kuda thamasikkuna oru cherpakkaran ayalde rage ne kurichittana kada so when you go through the entire play's plot at this particular point of time you may find it to be not something that would amuse you and you may also find gendered perspectives like you could see him uh, using sexist or uh, chauvinist comments at his wife and even the central element of the play where he uh, accuses his wife saying that she has not suffered much and it's only if she has a miscarriage she would learn uh, is something where you know uh, it, it is not something that we would ideally appreciate in a modern day society even though it exists in various families we will not appreciate somebody saying such uh, gendered things to anybody these days and uh, that line that part of the play also becomes central to the play because that ends up being like that but nonetheless we we'll quickly rush through the plot and i'll also show you a few scenes from the play and then we'll wind up with the play there is ayin apparatheka play ku valiya oru pradhanyam illa all that you need to know is about john osborne in general and you need to know about the angry young men movement which i have already briefed to you a little bit and uh, you just need to know the play if you, i mean the plot if you know the plot then uh, it becomes easier for you so what is it that happens in the play look back in anger le endana sambhavikkunna perlu oru idu undallo look back in anger so who is looking back in anger is something that you need to look at your your study material is sufficient enough to give you uh, a broad view of what happens in the play but just to keep it simple for you uh, it follows a young husband and wife as i've already told you alison and jimmy porter as they attempt to navigate class conflict and deal with a deteriorating marriage in 1950s england രണ്ട് പേരുണ്ട് ജിമ്മി എന്ന് പറയുന്ന നായകൻ ജിമ്മിയുടെ ഭാര്യയുടെ പേര് ആലിസൺ എന്നാണ് പെട്ടെന്ന് ഒരു ആണിന്റെ പേരായിട്ടൊക്കെ തോന്നുമെങ്കിലും ആലിസൺ ഒരു ഫീമെയിൽ ആണ് സോ ജിമ്മി ആൻഡ് ആലിസൺ ആർ മാരിഡ് ദേ ആർ ലിവിംഗ് ഇൻ മിഡിൽ ദർ ഇൻ എ മിഡിൽ ക്ലാസ് സെറ്റപ്പ് ഡോ ആലിസൺ ഇസ് ഫ്രം എ റിച്ച് ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗ
and uh, they are dealing with uh, uh, deteriorating marriage or atra stable allatha or korpathil ippa divorce inde virgil nikkunu ennu thonna reethiyilulla or marriage inde position laana avare relationship nikkunu alison comes from a traditional upper class background whereas jimmy comes from a working class background though he is highly educated ഞാൻ ഒരു ഒന്നോ രണ്ടോ ക്ലാസ് മുമ്പ് നിങ്ങളോട് ഈ സോഷ്യൽ മൊബിലിറ്റിയെ കുറിച്ചും സോഷ്യൽ ക്ലൈമ്പിങ്ങിനെ കുറിച്ചും ഒക്കെ പറഞ്ഞത് ഓർക്കുക അതിനും കുറെ നാൾ മുന്നേ ഈ വിദ്യാഭ്യാസത്തിലൂടെ ഒരു പാവപ്പെട്ട വീട്ടിൽ ജനിച്ച ഒരാൾക്ക് മുന്നേറാനുള്ള സാധ്യത കുറവായിരുന്നു പക്ഷെ ഈ നാടകത്തിലേക്ക് വരുമ്പോഴേക്കും തിങ്സ് ആർ ഡിഫറെന്റ് ആ വിക്ടോറിയൻ ക്ലാസ് ഹിപ്പോക്രസി ഒക്കെ കുറെ മാറിയിട്ടുണ്ട് ബട്ട് സ്റ്റിൽ ദ റിച്ച് റിമെയിൻസ് ദ റിച്ച് ആൻഡ് ദ മിഡിൽ ക്ലാസ് വിൽ ഹാവ് എ സോർട്ട് ഓഫ് എൻ ഈഗോ അപ്പം ആലസൺ ഇസ് ഫ്രോം എ ഫിൽത്തി റിച്ച് ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് വേറസ് a uh, hero jimmy is in a working class background struggling to meet both ends angane jeevikuna kashtapettu valarnu vanna oru nayagane aanu namukku jimmy il kaanan pattuga but he is highly educated as i have told you so the couple lives with cliff lewis who is an affable working class man and jimmy's long time friend idu pole thanne kashtapettu pani eduthu jeevikuna jimmy ide oru baadu naalayulla suhurthayittulla cliff inde koode ആണ് ഇവര് ജീവിക്കുന്നത് ക്ലിഫിൻ ആ ഫ്ലാറ്റിലെ ക്ലിഫിനും ഒരു റോൾ ഉണ്ട് ആൻഡ് ദ പ്ലേ ഓപ്പൺസ് ഓൺ എ സൺഡേ മോർണിംഗ് ഇൻ ദി അപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ആൻഡ് വെൻ ദ പ്ലേ ഓപ്പൺസ് ആലിസൺ അയൺസ് ക്ലോത്ത്സ് വെൽ ക്ലിഫ് ആൻഡ് ജിമ്മി റീഡ് ദ ന്യൂസ് പേപ്പർ നേരത്തെ പിഗ്മാലിയനിൽ ചോദിച്ച പോലെ ഒരു ഫെമിനിസ്റ്റ് പെർസ്പെക്ടീവിൽ ഈ നാടകത്തെ അനലൈസ് ചെയ്യാൻ ഒരു ചോദ്യം വന്നാൽ right from the beginning you can see a space where uh, you could problematize the entire household in a patriarchal way ജിമ്മു ക്ലിഫും വളരെ സുഖമായിട്ട് കാലുമേ കാല് കയറ്റിയിരുന്ന് പത്രം വായിച്ച് ജീവിക്കുകയാണ് അല്ലെ ലാവിഷായിട്ട് ഇരിക്കുകയാണ് അറ്റ് ദ സെയിം ടൈം ആലിസൺ ഇസ് സീൻ അയണിങ് ജിമ്മീസ് ഡ്രസ് അറ്റ് ദിസ് ക്രിട്ടിക്കൽ ജംഗ്സ് ഐ വുഡ് ലൈക്ക് ടു ഷെയർ മൈ സ്ക്രീൻ ആൻഡ് ഷോ യു ദ പ്ലേ പ്ലേ ഞാൻ ഷെയർ ചെയ്യാൻ കാരണം ഓക്കെ ജസ്റ്റ് ഗീ മി എ സെക്കൻഡ് ഓ ഐ ഹാവ് ടു ഓപ്പൺ ദ ജസ്റ്റ് ഗീ മി എ സെക്കൻഡ് ഐ ലൈക്ക് ടു ഷെയർ ദ പ്ലേ വിത്ത് യു so that i can uh, point out to you the difference that happens in or the detailing that goes on to the play right i'm trying to share the tab i hope it does end up well yep cool okay i hope my screen is visible to you this is the full play again available in bok you can see the three acts yeah i hope the technical error is solved from my side you can see the three acts and you can also look how time functions within acts and scenes pinne stuck aaya hello guys can you hear me hello yeah yeah yes sir okay okay there is yes, some technical issue from my side you can see the screen and can hear me sort the out yeah please be patient okay yeah thank you thank you uh it's just that my screen is stuck i cannot navigate between the google me tab and the pdf so that's why just give me a second ningana padivilla rana maybe some background update is running i don't know all right i hope now that's visible yeah uh so i'm just scrolling it down you can see the act and the titles there i'm not go my my focus is not that but look at the amount of detailing that goes into the opening scene or perhaps most of the scenes are like that look at the detailing that goes into the scene ninga screen visible aanu nan vishwasikunu irike kodi i can pin the screen for you just in case you are not able to see my shared screen yeah so if you can see that look at the detailed descriptions the, the porters that's jimmy porter and alison porter so they are they are regarded as porters and other matter cooli da kari alla to the porters one room flat in a large midland town early evening april um, the scene is fairly large attic room at the top of a large victorian house then there is this large description and l means left and r means right and the uh, momentum setting um what is there in the scene nalladum ella detail light to parayunu and at the rise of curtain you can see dash and dash in dash and dash positions our detailing ingane mottathil oru detailing oru onnara page vannattana dialogues like kadakkunnathu so i just want you to note this you can go back and read that later 
let me just quickly come back to the plot because we are in short of time and uh, a basic understanding of the plot would do for us for the time being okay so as i told you when the play opens they both are reading the newspapers and alison irons clothes the play's first act largely consists of jimmy's angry tirades against upper class complacency and his wife's lack of enthusiasm jimmy thinks that the suffering is the only way to experience true human emotion and that alison and other upper class people are therefore less alive than he is ഇതിനെ ഞാൻ പറയല്ലേ പല രീതിയിൽ കാണാം നമ്മൾ രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തൊന്നിൽ നിൽക്കുമ്പം ആ അമ്പത്തൊന്നിലെ അല്ലെ അമ്പത്തഞ്ചിലെ പോലെ തൊണ്ടോടാറ് വിഴുങ്ങാൻ ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടാണ് പക്ഷെ ആസ് പെർ ദ പ്ലേ താൻ കഷ്ടപ്പെട്ട് വളർന്ന ഒരാളായത് കൊണ്ട് ജിമ്മി വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നത് തൻ്റെ ജീവിതം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ തൻ്റെ അനുഭവങ്ങൾ തന്നെ ഇങ്ങനെ ആക്കി താനൊരു ഉത്തമ മനുഷ്യനാണെന്ന് എന്നാൽ തൻ്റെ ഭാര്യ അടക്കമുള്ള അപ്പർ ക്ലാസ് കാറ്റഗറിയിൽ പെട്ട ആൾക്കാർ ഭയങ്കര ലാഘവത്തോടെയാണ് ജീവിതത്തെ കാണുന്നത് അവർ കഷ്ടപ്പാടൊന്നും അനുഭവിച്ചിട്ടില്ല ഒരു ഒഴുക്കം മത്തിൽ ലാക്ക് ഓഫ് എന്തുസിയാസം മീൻസ് ഒരു ഒഴുക്കം മറ്റിലാണ് അവർ ജീവിക്കുന്നത് ദേ ആർ നോട്ട് സീരിയസ് അബൌട്ട് എനിത്തിങ് ഡി ഡോണ്ട് കെയർ അബൌട്ട് മച്ച് തിങ്സ് എന്ന രീതിയിൽ ജീവിതത്തിനെ സീരിയസ് ആയി കാണുന്നില്ല എന്നൊരു ഒരു ഒപ്പീനിയൻ ജിമ്മിക്കുണ്ട് ആദ്യ ആക്ടിൽ മൊത്തം ജിമ്മിയുടെ ഇത്തരത്തിലുള്ള ചീത്ത വിളികളാണ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അബ്യൂസസ് ആണ് she he accuses and he ill treats alison in that sense and he tries to say that these people are not as alive as he is he also seems to have some nostalgia for a past age in britain when the country had more power well historically speaking that's one thing i missed out in the meanwhile orkadam rendu loga mahayudham kondum logathu oru vaadu nashtam undayi nu parayumbodum etthom koodla laabu undaakiya america etthom koodla nashtam vannathu britain aanu കാരണം ഒരു കൊളോണിയൽ സൂപ്പർ പവർ ആയിരുന്ന ബ്രിട്ടൻ രണ്ട് ലോകമഹായുധങ്ങൾക്ക് ഇപ്പുറം തകർന്ന് തരിപ്പണമായിപ്പോയി ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ബ്രിട്ടൻ ലോസ്റ്റ് ഇറ്റ്സ് കൊളോണിയൽ സൂപ്രീമസി ഡ്യൂ ടു ദ ടു വേൾഡ് വോഴ്സ് സൊ ജിമ്മി ഇസ് സം വൺ ദാറ്റ്സ് വൈ പീപ്പിൾ ദേർ ബാക്ക് ദൻ കുഡ് റിലേറ്റ് ടു ജിമ്മി ബിക്കോസ് ദേ ലുക്ക് ബാക്ക് അറ്റ് ബ്രിട്ടൻസ് ഗ്ലോറി ആൻഡ് ആർ ഡിസപ്പോയിന്റഡ് വിത്ത് ദ കറണ്ട് റിയാലിറ്റി വിച്ച് ഇസ് അൺമിസ്റ്റേക്കബിൾ so jimmy has some nostalgia for a past age in britain when the country had more power jimmy's attempts to shock his wife into some display of emotion escalate as the act progresses eda endu parnalengilum bhariyikku oru bhavam undavatte enna reethil he keeps on alleging her keep on accusing her keeps on prodding her he insults her family and complains that all women are out to destroy men ഏതാ ഈ എല്ലാ പെണ്ണുങ്ങളും ഞങ്ങളെ ഊറ്റാൻ വേണ്ടി നടക്കുകയാണ് എന്ന രീതിയിലുള്ള സെക്സിസ്റ്റ് ആയ കമന്റുകൾ അടിക്കുന്നു കുടുംബക്കാരെ പറയുന്നു നീ നിന്റെ കുടുംബക്കാരൊക്കെ എങ്ങനെയാണ് എന്ന രീതിയിൽ പറയുന്നു ആൻഡ് ഹി ഗോസ് ഓൺ ഡൂയിങ് ദിസ് ആൻഡ് ക്ലിഫ് ഓഫൻ ട്രൈസ് ടു ചിയർ ജിമി അപ്പ് ആൻഡ് ഹി ബിഗിൻസ് ടു ബാൻഡ് ആൻഡ് ട്രൈ ടു ചിയർ ഹിസ് ഫ്രണ്ട് അപ്പ് ദ ടു വെൻ ദ ആക്ട് ഓപ്പൺസ് ഈ പറഞ്ഞ പത്രം വായിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നു ഇവിടെ കുറ്റം പറയുന്നു അതിന്റെ ഇടയിൽ ഇവർ ഇവൻ ചിയറപ്പ് ചെയ്യാൻ ശ്രമിക്കുന്നു അങ്ങനത്തെ ഒരു മസ്ലി പിടുത്തത്തിന്റെ ഇടയിൽ ബോത്ത് ക്ലിഫ് ആൻഡ് ജിമ്മി ഫോൾ അഗെയിൻസ്റ്റ് ആലിസൺസ് അയണിങ് ബോർഡ് ആൻഡ് ഷി ബേൺസ് ഹെർ ആം ജിമ്മി അപ്പോളജൈസസ് ബട്ട് ഷി എൽസ് എറ്റ് ഹെം ടു ലീവ് ആൻഡ് ഹി എക്സിസ്റ്റ് അപ്പൊ അതുവരെ നമ്മൾ കാണുന്ന സൈലന്റ് ആയി അയൺ ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ആലിസൺ സഹികെട്ടാൽ അല്ലെ സഹികെട്ടാൽ ആരും തിരിച്ചു പറയും എന്നാണല്ലോ പറയണേ അപ്പോ ക്ലിഫും ജിമ്മിയും കൂടെ ടസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്ത് ഈ അയൺ ബോക്സിന്റെ മുന്നിലേക്ക് വന്ന് അവളുടെ കൈ പൊള്ളി കഴിയുമ്പോൾ ഷി എൽ സെറ്റ് ജിമ്മി ആൻഡ് ആസ് ടു ഗെറ്റ് ഔട്ട് ആൻഡ് ബിക്കോസ് ജിമ്മി ഈസ് എൻ ഇ ഗോ ടു സ്റ്റിക് പേഴ്സൺ ഹി ബിക്കം ഹി ഗെറ്റ്സ് ആംഗ്രി ആൻഡ് ഹി എക്സിസ്റ്റ് ഹി എക്സിറ്റ്സ് ദ സ്റ്റേജ് ക്ലിഫ് ഹെൽപ്സ് ആലിസൺ ട്രീറ്റ് ദ ബേൺ ക്ലിഫ് കുറച്ചുകൂടി മനുഷ്യ പറ്റിക്കുള്ള ക്ലിഫ് പത്ത് കൊയ്യോ പൊള്ളിയോ എന്ന രീതിയിൽ ഹി ട്രൈസ് ടു ഹെൽപ്പ് ഹെർ ആൻഡ് ഷി റിവീൽസ് ടു ഹെം ദാറ്റ് ഷീസ് പ്രഗ്നന്റ് വിത്ത് ജിമ്മീസ് ചൈൽഡ് she hasn't told jimmy yet because she is afraid that he'll feel trapped and angry already nertha parnittundallo ningal pennungalokke njangal jeevitham nashpikkan vendiyana geri varunne appo kashtapettu middle class life innu munnotu varan shramichondikkana edile pregnant aanu kuda parnja alison is afraid that jimmy would again accuse her and he'll feel trapped and angry so she reveals the secret to cliff even though she hasn't told this to her husband cliff comforts alison and tells her that jimmy loves her and then he kisses her jimmy enters while they are kissing but doesn't acknowledge or object you know the three live in a non traditional setup that would have been shocking to the audiences back then 
ഒരു മൂന്ന് പേർ അതും ഒരു ഹസ്ബൻഡ് വൈഫിന്റെ കൂടെ ഒരു സുഹൃത്ത് ഒരുമിച്ച് താമസിക്കുന്നു എന്നുള്ളത് അന്നത്തെ ഓഡിയൻസിന് ഒരു പക്ഷെ ഉൾക്കൊള്ളാൻ പറ്റുന്ന ഒന്നായിരിക്കണമല്ല ഇന്നും നമ്മുടെ പല ഫ്ലാറ്റുകളിലും ആൾക്കാർക്ക് സാധാരണ പ്രശ്നങ്ങൾ വരും ബട്ട് ദെൻ ബാക്ക് ദെൻ അങ്ങനെ ആണെങ്കിൽ പോലും ആ പ്ലെയർ ആയിട്ട് പോർട്രേറ്റ് ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് വേ ആൻഡ് വൈൽ ക്ലിഫ് വാസ് കിസിങ് ദിസ് ഡസ് നോട്ട് ഇൻ ടു എനിത്തിങ് ക്ലിഫ് ആലിസും തമ്മിലൊരു ക്ലാൻഡസ്റ്റൈൻ അഫയർ ഉണ്ട് എന്നുള്ള എന്റെ സജഷൻ അല്ല ഇത് this does not hint at a illicit relationship between cliff and alison but nonetheless while comforting her he was simply giving her a peck and meanwhile jimmy enters he doesn't really bother about that much soon after cliff leaves to get some cigarettes and alison and jimmy share a tender moment and this tender moment is significant to you they play the bear and squirrel game it's just a chiding or like a karadi and squirrel sort of a game which they play amongst themselves they brings their childish side to the forefront so they play the bear and squirrel game which allows them to escape into affection while pretending to be animals then cliff returns and says that helena charles one of alison's upper class friends is on the phone but jimmy's mood immediately darkens ഹെലന എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു സുഹൃത്ത് ഫോണിലുണ്ട് എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോഴേക്കും പെട്ടെന്ന് ജിമ്മിയുടെ മൂഡ് മാറുന്നു വെൻ ആലിസൺ സെയ്സ് ദറ്റ് ഹെലന വോണ്ട്സ് ടു സ്റ്റേ വിത്ത് ദൻ ജിമ്മി എക്സ്പ്ലോഡ്സ് ഹി സെയ്സ് ഹി വിഷസ് ദറ്റ് ആലിസൺ വുഡ് ഹാവ് എ ബേബി ദറ്റ് വുഡ് ഡൈ സോ ദറ്റ് ഷി കുഡ് എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് ട്രൂ സഫറിങ് വെൽ ഒരു കോമൺ സെൻസിക്കൽ നമുക്കിത് ഇല്ലോജിക്കലായി തോന്നും അതായത് ഹെലനയ്ക്ക് ഇവരുടെ കൂടെ ക്ലിഫും അലിസൺ താമസിക്കുന്ന പോലെ ഹെലനയ്ക്ക് ഇവരുടെ കൂടെ താമസിക്കണം എന്ന് ഹെലന പറഞ്ഞതിന്റെ പേരിൽ ജിമ്മി പൊട്ടിത്തെറിക്കുന്നു നിനക്ക് എന്റെ കഷ്ടപ്പാടും ഒന്നും അറിഞ്ഞൂടാ യു നോ ഹൗ മച്ച് ഐ എം ട്രൈ ടു കീപ് ബോത്ത് എൻസ് മീറ്റ് ബോത്ത് എൻസ് സോ എന്നിട്ട് അതിനൊരു അനാലജി ആയിട്ട് ഒരു ബന്ധവും ഇല്ലാത്തൊരു അനാലജി ആണ് പുള്ളി ഡ്രോ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഹി ഡ്രോസ് എൻ അനാലജി വിച്ച് ഇസ് ഇൻകോൺഗ്രൂവസ് ഓർ ഇല്ലോജിക്കൽ ഹി സെയ്സ് ദാറ്റ് യു ഷുഡ് ഹാവ് എ ബേബി ദാറ്റ് വുഡ് ഡൈ സോ ദാറ്റ് യു കുഡ് എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് ട്രൂ സഫറിങ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എ ക്രൂവൽ തിങ് ടു സേ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ റിയലി ക്രൂവൽ തിങ് ടു സേ ടു എ to anybody for that sake forget your partner it's a cruel thing to say to anybody and mind you in this case there is also a, a case where as readers or as audience we know that alison is pregnant appo pregnant aaya alison odu ninge ninde garbha alasi poyale kashtapad endanu manasilavu nu parayumbo we could realize it in double ways we can see something evil coming in for, in future so that's a ill omen to speak about at that point of time but instinctive aid jimmy parayna he does he's like a pure soul in that sense he is instinctive and he says things that comes to his mind he does not really think about how the other person would feel that's where the first act ends the second act begins with helena and alison sharing the womanly duties of the home while jimmy plays his trumpet off stage stage in the back in jimmy trumpet play cheyunu helena and alison in kitchen l irunu womanly duties cheya Alison tells Helena about her first months with Jimmy. They lived with his working class friend Hugh Tanner and spent time going on raids to parties of Alison's upper class friends. She says that she felt like a hostage from the sections of society that had declared war on. Helena asks why they got married and Alison says that it seemed to be largely because Alison's mother and her father Colonel Redfern disapproved. അല്ലേ പലപ്പോഴും പ്രണയത്തിൽ നിന്ന് വിവാഹത്തിലേക്ക് എടുത്തു ചാടാനുള്ള ഒരു പ്രേരക ശക്തി വീട്ടിൽ നിന്നുള്ള എതിർപ്പാണ് അപ്പൊ ബിക്കസ് ആലിസൺ വാസ് ഫ്രം എ റിച്ച് ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ആൻഡ് ആലിസ് ജിമ്മി വാസ് ഫ്രം എ വർക്കിംഗ് ക്ലാസ് ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ഹർ പേരൻസ് വെ നോട്ട് ഹാപ്പി അബൌട്ട് ദർ യൂണിയൻ ആൻഡ് ബിക്കോസ് ദേ പ്രൊട്ടസ്റ്റഡ് ആ ഒരു ചൂടിൽ ഇവർ എന്നാ പിന്നെ ഒരുമിച്ച് ജീവിച്ച് കാണിച്ചിട്ടേ ഉള്ളൂ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ് ചാടി പുറപ്പെട്ടതാണ് ആൻഡ് സം ഹൗ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഇൻ ദ കറന്റ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് that made jimmy want her to marry her no matter what and alison went with her and that's what happened so jimmy and cliff come in to eat when he hears that helena and alison are going to church together later that day jimmy also becomes convinced that helena is out to take alison away from him so somehow he's got this hunch helena vanna alison thanne vittu povum oru hunch jimmy got so he lets fly a series of outrageous insults against alison's mother Helena tries and fails to reason with him and Jimmy asks whether she has ever watched someone die He tells the story of watching his father die from wounds receiving received fighting in the Spanish Civil War when he was 10 years old and claims that this taught, this taught him more about life than Helena and Alison 
know even now so see how he draws stupid analogies eda thanne vittu alison povu nu vicharichu alison de amme kudumbakare ok cheetha vilikunu ennittu helena logically reason cheyan nokumbo ei njangal onnu palli poyittu varado nu parayumbodekkum he tries to speak about i and what suffering means and how they won't understand that at all so near the end of the scene jimmy leaves to go get the telephone while he's gone helena tells alison that she has sent a message to colonel redford asking him to come pick alison up avo korchu munbe jimmy pedicha pole thanne helena idakka kandattu alison de achanu message ayichittundu vannu ivula vilichondu poi ivide va mariyai kalla ivula treat cheyane nu parannu Alison does not protest because she has had enough. In this, this girl is saying, "I am very angry with her." Alison is very angry, so she does not protest. When Jimmy returns, he says that Hugh's mom, the working-class woman who set up, set him up in his candy stall and for whom he harbors deep affection, is dying of a stroke. He asks Alison to come to the hospital with him. Instead, she goes to church. Jimmy is left alone on stage. അപ്പൊ നേരത്തെ ഇവരുടെ കൂടെ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്ന ഹ്യൂവിന്റെ അമ്മ ഒരു സ്റ്റോക്ക് വന്ന് ഹോസ്പിറ്റലൈസ്ഡ് ആണ് എന്റെ കൂടെ വാ എന്ന് ജിമ്മി പറയുമ്പോ ജിമ്മി പറയുന്നത് കേൾക്കാതെ അലിസൺ ഹെലനയുടെ കൂടെ ചർച്ചിലേക്ക് പോവാണ് ദാറ്റ്സ് വേ സീൻ ടു ഐ മീൻ സീൻ സീൻ വൺ ഇൻ സീൻ ആക്ട് ടു എൻസ് ഇൻ ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് സീൻ കേണൽ റെഡ് ഫോൺ ഹെൽപ്സ് അലിസൺ പാക്ക് ടു ലീവ് അപ്പൊ അച്ഛൻ വന്നു അച്ഛൻ മകളെ പാക്ക് ചെയ്ത് കൂട്ടെ കൊണ്ടുപോകാൻ വേണ്ടി ബാഗ് ഒക്കെ പാക്ക് ചെയ്യാണ് he reveals that he thinks he and alison's mother reacted too strongly to her marriage with jimmy and jimmy might have been right to be angry with them so achamar anganeyallo onnude ivda nikku nokka parayana reethil compromising aayittu veetukar samsarikkuvallo appo aa reethil he is trying to pacify her daughter his daughter saying that maybe we were wrong jimmy is the right person and because we protested it's natural that he'll have grudges njangal njangal theri vilichengi mol adu mind cheyanda njangal protest cheyidondulla kalipayittu kanda madi ennu parnu he is trying to reason out so he says that he thinks that jimmy could be right that he is a relic in, of an old version of england that has ceased to exist he also says that he and alison have a tendency to stay neutral and not take a strong stand on things appo achan ingane ka paraneyta alison ingane andam vittu nikkana she is surprised to hear this from her father and as she finishes packing she briefly reconsiders her move see appa achinna strategy era kore work cheyid bag ok pack cheyina edile achin ingane ok parayana avan paavam aanu mole njangal ingane edirthu onda irikkum chalappa avan njangale cheetha parayunnathu nee edu kaariya aakanda after all ninnodulla sneha illa avan sneha ullavan aanu ennokke parayan shramikkya so some way idakke keta alison oru rethinking undavu aanu she has almost completed packing her bags but then she rethinks for a brief moment then helena enters and alison decides to go the moment she sees helena she decides to go she says goodbye to cliff helena stays behind because she has a work meeting the following day ella oppichittu helena povunnilla helena ki vittey osoru meeting undu and helena stays alison and her father exit and cliff angry that helena has disrupted their lives leave before jimmy comes back see cliff in another soft corner und appa avara natural life ne helena disrupt cheyidu ennulla deshathil cliff irangi povu jimmy returns a few moments later furious having seen alison leaving with her father on his way home helena gives him a letter that alison wrote explaining her decision Jimmy is angry at her polite restrained language. Appo varuna valike Jimmy ee reethil Jimmy Helena e kaanunnundu appo Helena ingane ittittu pol Jimmy ku nalla arisham undu Jimmy is really angry with the way in which uh, she has taken a decision to desert him. At the same time when he returns Helena gives her a letter given by Jimmy. Sorry given by Alison. A letter le valare formal aayittu ivula ezhudirikkunna vaichittu Jimmy further gets angry helena tells him that alison is going to have a baby he says that he is not overcome with emotion at this news and insult helena insults helena who slaps him eda helena parayunu ninde bhariya garbhini aanu ennu idu keta odane out of emotion jimmy insults helena and 
അൺലൈക്ക് അലിസൺ കേട്ടോണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരാളല്ലേ ഹെലന സോ ഹെലന സ്ലാപ്സും ബാക്ക് ദിസ് കോസസ് ജിമ്മി ടു കൊളാപ്സ് ഇൻ ഡെസ്പായർ ഏതാ പെട്ടെന്ന് കിട്ടിയ അടിയിൽ തരിച്ചു തന്ന് ജിമ്മി ഇരുന്നു പോകുന്നു ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ഇസ് വെയർ ദ ട്വിസ്റ്റ് കംസ് ആസ് ഐ ടോൾഡ് യു കീപ്പ് യുവർ ബ്രെയിൻസ് ഔട്ട് ദിസ് ഇസ് വെയർ ദ ട്വിസ്റ്റ് കംസ് സീയിങ് ജിമ്മി ഇൻ ഡെസ്പയർ ഹെലന കിസസ് ഇം പാഷനേറ്റ്ലി ആൻഡ് ദി ആക്ട് എൻസ് ഞാൻ പറയല്ലേ ഇതൊരു ലോജിക്കൽ രീതിയിൽ കണ്ടുപോയാ ഐ ഡോ നോ വെയർ ദിസ് പ്ലേ വുഡ് എൻഡ് തുടക്കം തൊട്ടേ ക്ലിഫും ജിമ്മിയും ആലിസനും ഒരുമിച്ച് താമസിക്കുന്നു and cliff kisses alison at one point of time then pregnant aaya cliff sorry pregnant aaya alison helena parnade edittu edittu povunu cliff deshapettu povunu then helena kisses jimmy well i i am yet not able to read through this i have been teaching this for a long time but i still don't know the logic behind this i leave it to you read a receptive theory okay the next scene opens several months later looking very similar to the beginning of act 1 except that it is now helena who is irony you see the irony don't you even a tallan matram guts undarana helena a few months later when act 3 opens helena is seen ironing just like alison used to jimmy and cliff joke and discuss newspaper articles avaru ippu irunna adhe palaye oru vaadi cheyunnundu they sit and discuss newspaper articles helena uh, and in the meanwhile cliff dirty is his shirt he vindum tasli irutti he dirty is a shirt and helena leaves to clean it while she is off stage cliff tells jemmy that he is moving out so helena ivara shirt clean cheyan vendi stage inde poragilekku povumbulikum cliff parayunu nan ivada nu maarukana maar thamsikkan povana nu parayum gb wonders why he has always chosen women over male friendship even though he value cliff's company more highly than he values helena's Helena comes back with the shirt and Cliff leaves to dry it in his room. Helena tells Jimmy that she loves him and he asks her desperately to never leave him. I am sure you know the next twist. Helena says, I don't know what to do. Jimmy says, I don't know what to do. Jimmy says, I don't know what to do. Jimmy says, I don't know what to do. The next moment, what happens? Tantadayan. It's a story. Alison returns. Amachi, Thirumbi Vandach. So Alison appears at the door looking sick and disheveled. The next scene opens a few minutes later with, jump, with Jimmy playing his trumpet off stage again. Alison tells Helena that she is not angry with her and is not trying to break up the new couple. So Alison is not angry with her. So Alison is not angry with her. I am not angry with her. I am not angry with her. I am not angry with her. Uh, i am not angry with you either helena however says that alison's presence has reminded her that what she is doing is wrong so twist galde porthu twist aanu alison tirichu vannadu kondu alison e kandadu kondu helena ki kutta bodham undavunu naan cheyina thettaanu ela thottu munbe i love you nu naan ninneyittu povilada nu parna kakshiyana appo i get reminded of what i was doing was wrong nu helena paraya so she gets reminded that what she was doing was wrong Alison has also had a miscarriage and Helena considers this a judgment on her relationship. So Alison de garbam alasi poi ennattan Alison tirichu vannikunnu. Aa adi act inde avasanam parna line pole thanne adu sambhavichu. She calls Jimmy back and tells him that she is leaving. Are Helena. Jimmy says that he always knew Helena wasn't strong enough for true love which requires muscle and guts. സി തൊട്ട് മുമ്പ് എന്നെ വിട്ടിട്ട് പോവല്ലേ പൊന്നേ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ ആളാണ് ദ മൊമെന്റ് ഷി സേസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഓവർ ഹി സ്റ്റാർട്ട്സ് അബ്യൂസിംഗ് ഹർ സെയിങ് ദാറ്റ് ഐ ഓൾവേസ് ന്യൂ ദാറ്റ് യു ആർ നോട്ട് മെയ്ഡ് അപ്പ് ഫോർ ട്രൂ ലവ് നീ തട്ടിപ്പാന്ന് എനിക്ക് പണ്ടേ അറിയാം നീ തേപ്പുകാരിയാണ് യു ക്യാൻ സ്റ്റിൽ സി എ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് ജിമി പോർട്ടേഴ്സ് അറൌണ്ട് ജസ്റ്റ് ലുക്ക് അറൌണ്ട് ഓക്കെ സോ ആലിസൺ ഓക്കെ ദെൻ ബിക്കോസ് ഹി സേസ് ദിസ് ഹെലന ലീവ്സ് ഹെലന എന്തായാലും ഇവരുടെ ഇടയിൽ ഒരു കഞ്ചി പാറ്റായിട്ടിരിക്കാൻ ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നില്ല ഹെലന ലീവ്സ് Alison apologizes and Jimmy says that she should have sent flowers to Hugh's mom and remembers his first meeting with her when he thought she had a wonderful relaxation of spirit. Era veendum kutta padathilekku kadakka. Avante amma stroke vannu kadannittu nee oru poo oru bouquet polu aichillallo ennu parayan. This turned out to be just complacency he says and Alison lets out a cry and tells him that 
the loss of their child has made her understand the depth of emotion that he wanted her to have all this time play the music yeah i mean to 2021 i am not going to digest this act one avasanam parane pole she had a miscarriage she had a realization cheta nan vashamam endanannu manasilakki cheta nan cheta nadathike tirichu vannu cheta is what she says okay so jokes apart yeah she uh, she uh, convinces him that she has understood the depth of the emotion because she had a miscarriage she tells him that she wants to be corrupt and futile and collapses at his feet nan kaale pidikam enne tirichedukku jimmy can't bear to see her this way and kneels to help her eda kaale veenu kanya pinne thirnallo appo thaale veenu veendum ketti pidikiyana and then with a kind of mocking tender irony he launches into their bear and squirrel game poor squirrels he says to alison and she responds poor poor bears this is how the play ends and this is all that play is all about idin apparthe ka play kurichu ningal karyamayi bother cheyanda ee plot ne ningalku chodyu ansarichu assess cheya angry young men well take the chauvinist apart say that men are angry if they belong to middle class if they have a struggling life and their wives are passionate i mean dispassionate because they belong to a filthy back, rich background bari nannam vendi alle chetan ingane cheyathu enna or angle ningalku pidikka alla feminism vanna you can take your views or whatever you feel like taking so on that positive note well i don't know how positive that is it's one of the most stupidest plays that i'm ever forced to teach it doesn't make any sense to me no matter how many times i deal with that plot but the reason why i still teach that is angry young men movement is something that you should always know and it's a general question for the ugc net exam as well so ask me ham kondu mathram yani oru manikur despite my ideology not fitting into this mold yan kalayunnathu in the meanwhile as i had told you yesterday i hope you are ready with your annotations uh, what i want you to do is i'm going to share another link in the chat box it's a google docs link ini nan parayna instructions ellare shraddhichu kekka nan ipo share cheyan povunna google docs link il attendance mark cheythu kazhinavar poittu give any fictitious serial number say 1 2 22 32 42 whatever you want to the number does not matter give a fictitious number and copy paste your annotation answer into that word file nan fictitious number kodukkan paranju mattoral type cheyumbum അത് ഓവർ റൈഡ് ചെയ്യാതിരിക്കാനാണ് സോ ടൈപ്പ് എ ഫിക്ടീഷ്യസ് നമ്പർ ആൻഡ് കോപ്പി പേസ്റ്റ് യുവർ ആൻസേഴ്സ് ദ വേർഡ് ഫയൽ ഇസ് ദയർ ഇൻ യുവർ ചാറ്റ് ബോക്സ് ദ ഗൂഗിൾ ഡോക്സ് ഫയൽ ടു ബി വെരി ഓണസ്റ്റ് ദ ഗൂഗിൾ ഡോക്സ് ലിങ്ക് ഇസ് ദയർ ഇൻ യുവർ ചാറ്റ് ബോക്സ് പ്ലീസ് ഹാവ് എ ലുക്ക് എറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് വിൽ ഡിസ്കസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇൻ അനദർ ഫൈവ് മിനിറ്റ്സ് മേ ബി വിത്ത് ഇൻ ഫൈവ് മിനിറ്റ്സ് മാർക്ക് ദി അറ്റൻഡൻസ് ആൻഡ് കോപ്പി പേസ്റ്റ് ദീസ് തിങ്സ് ആൻഡ് മേ ബി ഫ്രം അനദർ ഫൈവ് മിനിറ്റ്സ് ഓൺവേർഡ്സ് വിൽ ഡിസ്കസ് യുവർ അനോട്ടേഷൻസ് and i believe you have done that cheyrettillengil it becomes even more difficult to convince you what to do and what not to do uh these lines are from dr fosters the play that we dealt with initially and the lines are his faith is great i cannot touch his soul but what i may afflict with i will attempt which is but little worth so you have been given two lines and uh, how to write an annotation is something that our students are generally clueless about so just in case you know this then it becomes easier for you to write so what happens here let's have a look at this model answer that we have and as i told you i don't know who has posted this i don't want the particulars oh my god again yeah uh, i don't want the particulars and no offense to the person who has written this i'm just giving a comment a feedback and i hope that will help you so the answer goes like this the the words were spoken by mephistopheles in the play the tragical history of dr faustus by christopher marlow regarding an old man who had come to tempt faustus to turn to the parts of righteousness in scene 30 the act happens close to the time when faustus soul is about to be taken on the old man's advice to repent he starts to waver in his mind and blah 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 and there is a second paragraph which says the significance of the old man appears at this point because he along with foster is approaching death then there is an explanation of that that happens this is how that person has uh, structured that paragraph or that annotation and before we move on to a description of what actually is the structure of an annotation let me begin with a simple question 
how many paragraphs do you think is required for an annotation and what is an ideal length to write an annotation i repeat how many paragraphs do you think is ideal for an annotation and what length can you take or use or spend to write an annotation three i think three paragraph three okay any other answer any other observation uh, in question paper itself it's written 150 words so yeah. maybe i'm glad that you went through the question paper and you're particular about that 150 words three okay. or two or four paragraphs how much it is etra paragraph vanu okay let's take three four for the time being let's take three so what is this three paragraph about nyan ipa kaanicha example la rendu paragraph ullu alle rendu paragraph ullu so what is this three paragraph all about a moon paragraph the first will paragraph. be the introduction huh. or the person who says or the intro thing okay and the second will be the content what content. it is saying or like mm. okay. yeah okay, and the so last, the last paragraph? conclusion conclusion okay it is say pole ay poyilu ipo parnu parnu okay so what will the introduction have for that sake angane anengi Yes, it will be the play uh, where this line is saying mm -hmm. and right. the person who is speaking uh -huh. and the act scene and all it will be uh, maybe okay great so let me put it this way guys we are, we are short of examples otherwise i could have given you uh, live examples and told you not to write this way not to write this way so i can only remember bank on my memory and hypothesize and tell you this is the way you should write and this is not the way you should write look at the beginning of this annotation i would say the beginning has a lot of interest in you know re relevant data i agree with that i appreciate that but never begin your annotation like this in the first paragraph which is like you said a sort of an introduction it's more of an identification than an introduction to be honest so in that first paragraph you are actually supposed to identify where those two lines or four lines are from it may be two it may be four it may be six it may vary so you have to identify where these lines are from ee varigal evadana eduthekkunnathu enna identify cheyalana ningada aadatha kadama appo adu identify cheyumbo that's where people go wrong most of the learners end up answering this question i can give you 3 to 4 demo the words were spoken by mephistopheles in the play dr faustus these words are spoken by mephistopheles in the play dr faustus the above lines are taken from dr faustus this is how people begin the essay i mean begin the annotation there are also people who copy these two lines and then again begin by saying the above lines or these lines or these words were spoken by dash in the play fosters or if if you don't know the speaker these lines are taken from this play the problem with that is you are not supposed to begin annotation like that you should begin annotation in indirect speech you should begin by saying for instance dr fosters is a play written by christopher marlowe and then in reported speech you should say in scene 13 suppose you remember the lines line 77 to 80 or 79 such and such character says dash and dash and dash to dash and dash and dash i hope you understand for example i could remember you you are a fishmonger aren't you if that's a line for instance you should begin your answer by saying hamlet is a revenge tragedy by william shakespeare in act dash scene dash hamlet comes across polonius and when polonius asks hamlet does he identify him then hamlet replies either you can put it in reported speech or you can put it in double quotes that's up to you you can say hamlet replies that he remembers him and mockingly suggests that he is a fishmonger this is what your first paragraph is all about you identify the work 
the author, the context, who speaks to whom. And who speaks to whom can also vary. For example, it could be a choric line. It could be a, a soliloquy. It could be an aside. It could be possible. It could be anything for that sake. So it needn't be one person talking to another person. It could also be a monologue. But you get marks for this. It is the first paragraph and the last paragraph that fetches you actually good marks. Second paragraph is generally a detailing of that line. So you that's not what actually matters. If you have a good introduction and a good conclusion, and mind you, you have only five marks to bid for. Anju markini veditani kasaratumotam. So when you do that, you need not overdo and write, say, three, four pages. If this be considered a page, yeah, an A4 sheet, three-fourths of this would do, or maximum a page. Ennatam patilingar onnegal page, not more than that. Mind you, five marks is your value. At PG level, one page is five marks. I'm not saying that if you write four pages, you'll get 20 out of 20 for your essay. No, but ideally, that's what you are expected to write. So one page or a three-fourth or maximum a page and a quarter. If you write more than that, you have two problems. One, you're still going to get only out of five. Nobody can give you 10 for that if you write three pages, for instance. And two, you are losing your own valuable time. You have a lot of other things to write. So keep it to a page. Keep it brief. Three para structure. Your point on you are correct. Three para structure. First para is about identification. Put it in indirect speech. For example, if you have a line like, you have to suffer with a miscarriage, only then you will learn how terrible life is. You have to begin it by writing. Look Back in Anger is a play by John Osborne. The play is known for this angry young man wave. In Act 1, or in the play, Act 1 ends with Jimmy talking to his wife or, or uh, suggesting to his wife that she should have a miscarriage in order to understand what real suffering is. And then you move on to the second paragraph. So what do you do in the second paragraph? Again, that's crucial. You can do two things in a second paragraph. One, you can summarize these two lines or four lines or six lines, whatever is given to you. You can explain that. Like when somebody says this, for example, in Foster's Foster's says that is this the phase that burned the topless towers of Iliad? So you can say that um, Foster's is astonished to see Mephistopheles as Helen. He admonishes her beauty and he wonders, you know, the Trojan War took place because of this beautiful creature. That's the explanation of those lines. But then, if you want to get better marks, you could ideally recollect the line before and the line after, or at least recollect the context. Line If you can recollect the context, that will be good. For example, if the annotation is frailty, thy name is woman. You have begun the essay stating that Hamlet is a play by William Shakespeare. Um, in the play, after Act One, uh, Hamlet in his soliloquy, in his first soliloquy. Yeah, that's a precise thing that you can say. First soliloquy, second soliloquy, third soliloquy. So that shows that you know it in depth. You could simply say soliloquy, but you could say in this particular soliloquy. If you can speak about lines, well and good, but don't burn your brains for that. It's okay. Even if you don't know Act 3, Scene 2, that's fine. But if you know, you get a better mark, better scope, better marks. So you can say at the end of Act 1, in his first soliloquy, Hamlet is frustrated, disgusted with a series of tragedies that he's suffered. He's lost his father, his mother, uh, his uncle has usurped the kingdom. Usurped, a word if, just in case you are not familiar with. Usurped, to snatch from somebody and keep it with myself. So usurped the kingdom, Claudius, and his mother has <clears throat> married his uncle. So out of frustration, in a soliloquy, Hamlet accuses his mother, saying, frailty, thy name is woman. So that's where first paragraph ends. In the second paragraph, you go on to explain this. So as you do that, you can say that 
uh, Hamlet is frustrated and he accuses his mother to be fragile. Fragile can mean two things. It can mean that she is physically weak or it can also mean she is, her senses are weak, like she is lustuous. Sexual uh, sense elaborate here. But it would fetch you more marks if you say that when the soliloquy opens, Hamlet is thoroughly shattered. He, his fury is went towards his mother. He draws the Greek myth where he compares Niobe. When her husband died, she cried and made an entire river out of it. Then he accuses that his mother, who did not wait but swiftly married his mother. He uses the word thrift, thrift, thrift. T-H-R-I-F-T, thrift. Yeah? So thriftly married his uncle. He has every reason to accuse her. He says, frailty, thy name is woman. And maybe a couple of lines to that. That ends the second paragraph. So what is the third paragraph all about? The third paragraph is about concluding, like you have already said. It's again a strange line. You can even do it in the second para itself. Whether you want a third para is up to you. The second paragraph in the attempt and the real then you can third para is the poor. Alangal you can separate it. That's up to you. It depends on what do you want to add in the third para. The third para can have a lot of things. It can be a comment on the theme that is addressed in the annotation. For example, in this case, you can say that even though Shakespeare did not intend misogyny back then or he was not bothered about misogyny back then, the present day critics look at these lines in a misogynist way. Hamlet, no matter whether his anger is rational or not, he vents his frustration at his mother by calling her uh, to be fragile. You can even make your observations there and say that Hamlet's misogyny does not end here. He's rude to his beloved Ophelia too, where he says, get thee to a nunnery. Nunnery has two meanings, I've already told you. Veshyalitinim nunnery nulika. Deviga verileka poona adinim nunnery nulika. So he accuses his wife, his, his beloved lover, that get thee to a nunnery, go to a nunnery. So you can draw such comparisons, analogies if you want. You can make your own comments. If you learn by heart and if you know a comment by some other critic, well and good, bring him. Don't create a critic. Don't say that Mr. John James Lewis said so. Because those who are valuing this are all senior professors. So they really know who is original and who is not. So don't create your own quotes saying that, putting it to someone else's mouth. Don't say that Plato commented on the play as one of the best plays ever written by Shakespeare. You see the irony, don't you? When Shakespeare wrote his play, Plato was not alive. Yeah. So don't write such things. If you learn by heart, you may do that, but that's not required. Trust me. Even if you don't remember the lines, that's fine. You can paraphrase that. That will do. I've never, uh, my memory was so terrible. I, I, I did my annotations without writing a single line. I only paraphrased, but still I got good marks because I did all these three things. So in the third paragraph, you can have a comparison, an analogy, maybe a comparison with another play where we have a similar scene. Or maybe you can draw a, an analogy within the play. You can draw, uh, you can speak about the style of the writer. You can say that Shakespeare has used blank verse and that has heightened the effect of this, uh, these lines. You say that, we believe. There is no questions asked. So you can make such comment on the structure, rhythm, patterns used by the writer, techniques used by the writer. Maybe you can speak about the writer, for instance. The writer had suffered dash and dash. For instance, John Osborne lived in a World War NUI, so he was desolate with the events so dull and challenging. And uh, we can see a lot of autobiographical elements in Jimmy Porter. Yeah, we can surely say that. Jimmy Portal, Yadam Aitabhan, the Protocore autobiographical elements on the Can I ask so a question here, sir? 
sorry for the interruption. Yes, please. No, yeah, no, no worries, no worries. This, this is an open session. Please okay, go. Okay, okay. So you were uh, mentioning about me. If at all we don't, suppose if you don't get from where the lines has been taken. So just to pa get the pass mark, uh, you were uh, saying that uh, we can paraphrase it. So that if we just write about the style, about the author and about the uh, play, that, that is enough to get the pass marks, if at all. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me make it clear. Don't get me wrong. When I say paraphrase the line, what I mean is the problem of ha having annotation in MEG2 is that there are a lot of learners who call me before the day of the exam saying that, Sare, I'm really scared. I'm unable to remember these lines by heart. So what I'm saying is you need not learn the lines by heart. You only need to identify them. For example, you have a line like, uh, well, give me some line, guys. Okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm slightly uh, clueless now. Give me some line from somewhere. Uh, what? Yeah. Um, qua, 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 that lucky speech line. Okay. So there's this uh, God, blah, 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 la, 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 that, the, that line is given. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, what I said is don't learn those lines by heart to rewrite that. But be learned enough to, to identify that. Okay. Yeah, be, be familiarized to identify that these lines are from Waiting for Godot. If you oh. know these lines are from Waiting for Godot, even if yeah. you can't identify the context, at least you can write the first and last para. Okay. okay. What is okay. it? You can say that uh, Waiting for Godot is a play by Samuel Beckett. Yeah. In that lucky okay. speech, lucky speech is a very important passage where lucky okay. gives a speech, which is uh, okay. full of this sort of gibberishness. Okay. And then okay. whatever you write in the second paragraph, you may not get marks if you get it wrong. But at least okay. say out of five, you will get one mark out of zero instead of zero. You'll get a mark and a half maybe. <laughs> okay. And you have four okay. annotations. And you have four okay. annotations. So one and a half into four would mean six out of 20. Okay. Which is a pass mark, right? Okay, okay thank you. Sir. Yeah. That is the worst case scenario. Just yeah, that's a worst case scenario. But worst case scenarios are possible because you only get six yeah, passages. Yeah, that, that's it. You only get that's six it. passages that's out of which you have to answer four. Which yeah. means you may write three, you may identify two or three, but one would still be a problem for you sometimes. Yeah. You should be prepared for that too. That's why yes. Yeah, you, you, you have to be because annotations are mandatory. Unlike any other okay. questions, annotations are mandatory. Yeah. You cannot skip that. Okay. It is in the essay part that you have choice. Okay. Yeah. So we can spend, say, three to four minutes if you have any doubts regarding the annotation. And I'll quickly move on to the essay part. Okay. Oh, so very quickly, one more doubt. The please, third please, paragraph please go. you asked, you told that you can write for a comparison. So yeah. for writing the comparison, is there any particular uh, uh, format? Or uh, I mean to say, when the comparisons differ with everybody's perception, right? So is it okay to go uh, with that? No, no, but as long as comparisons are logical, it can be compared, right? For instance, I'll tell you how. Again, don't use the I narrative anywhere. Don't say I feel, I look like this or anything. You can say that one can see, one can observe like that. And uh, regarding the analogy or the comparison, you know, for instance, uh, I'm not getting one precisely right now. Okay, for instance, um, take the case of frailty, thy name is woman, for instance. And you are trying to say that all men are chauvinistic, all men are misogynistic. And when they are faced with a problem, they end up abusing women. Say this is your claim. Okay. Okay. In the in the last paragraph, you are trying to say that Hamlet is an ass just like that. He's he's a stereotypical male, and because he is suffering and he cannot get over it, he is abusing women. In that case, his mother and his lover. Okay, or lady love for that sake. And uh, uh, you want to draw an analogy, and you say that it's not about Shakespeare. Even in twentieth century, someone like John Osborne in a play like Look Back in Anger, portrays Jimmy Porter, who condemns and abuses his wife or hurls abuses at his wife, misogynistic abuses. Now, this is an observation. This is an analogy. This is a comparison. Okay. Okay. And this comparison is not perceptional. Yes, it's perceptual in the sense you have read that, you have thought it in this way, that's why you're drawing the comparison. Yes. But then apart from that, that is a valid comparison. Okay, I understand. So, yeah. Sensible, right? So as long as it's sensible, that's okay. Okay. 
Thank you. Don't sir. don't bring something that you cannot validate. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank sir, Anand, yeah. sir. Yes, please. Sir, I have quickly typed out uh, uh, something uh, in the annotation. Uh, would you kindly uh, look at it? Oh yeah, I'll also share the screen for others to have a look at that as well, so that we can discuss that in a very brief span of time. The tragical history of Doctor Forces. Again, look at the uh, way you write. Okay, all caps is not the way. Okay, when we when we type, we do that. I understand you type quickly, but then when you write, be sure about your capitalization, spelling, and punctuations. When you write Doctor Forces, D and F is capital. The rest is small. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So that's something that everybody. I'm, I'm telling this to everybody. When you say Elizabethan, E is capital. It's right here. E should be capital. The rest should be small. Elizabethan. Yeah, and uh, be sure about the spelling of Elizabeth. This is right, but there are people who make. I mean, I don't know whether it's because you do or you don't. There are so many people who make Eliza bath, as if she doesn't bath. Yeah, there are a lot of people who make Eliza to bath or to bathe. Yeah, so it's Elizabeth, not Eliza bath. So be sure about those spellings. Be sure about Christopher Marlowe spelling, William Shakespeare spelling, and so on. So it's written by. is ingenious required here that's up to you okay is written by the elizabethan dramatist christopher marlowe so that scores a point right elizabethan dramatist so you know that he she is an elizabethan dramatist a victorian playwright or a post war era writer so you you are able to locate that writer the name is there the place name is there the context is there dr foster records how over ambition that's the theme of the play right over ambition leads to the tragic fall and damnation two key words in that play tragic fall and damnation so play with those key words as well theater of the absurd nothing happens nobody comes nobody goes so play with those key words angry young men yeah so the speaker is none other than the brilliant dr fostus full stop and uh, you you should not write this is a soliloquy this is what i was forbidding you from doing you should say in her soliloquy if possible you can mark the act or scene scene 13 scene 12 or towards the end of the play so in her soliloquy towards the end of the play we can see dr foster's lamenting on his imbecility of trading his soul with bilsbub in exchange of 24 glorious years then you go on to explain that and see you should never write this these lines you can simply say during her soliloquy or during uh speaking those lines those instead of these yeah you can try to define that and then you try to conclude it and here these observations are also valid he uses words such as soul should fly from me stresses on me the possessive pronoun you know that's a linguistic take on that which is also good if you can make such an observation it is still valid enough to be a conclusive conclusionary portion it's a good attempt but not worth 5 on 5 but it's a hurried one i understand that no worries so i could not type the entire thing that's okay that's okay that's why i said no offense i'm just trying to help everybody out with whatever little resources i have so very quickly one more doubt yes, uh, so you, you also said in para 3 you can comment on the rhythm uh, do you please mind giving one example on that please sir see i've already told you for instance william shakespeare Wrote his lines in blank verse. It was began. It was started by Christopher Marlowe and Shakespeare perfected it, mm-hmm. and he's used the he's popularized the iambic pentameter. Okay. So maybe if you want, you can claim that the use of iambic pentameter with blank verse has heightened the effect of okay. those lines. Okay. Yeah. Nobody can disagree with you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. i hope that's clear yes sir yeah. okay so i'm quickly moving on to the essay part i won't take long because it's a similar structure uh i'll quickly move on to the essay part maybe 5 to 10 minutes and then we can have as much time as you want with your q and a if you don't have any we'll wind up speaking about essay let me begin with the elementary things more often than not i get asked my asked by my students sare irodu mark inde essay ke etra page a eludundu Yeah, how many pages should I write for twenty marks? 
I've already told you at the PG level, the assumption is that a page is of five mark value. So four pages, which means a page, two, three, another one, is ideally what you can write. But four is too long, to be honest. I would say three and a half. One, two, three, and a half of that would do. So three and a half, if you write well, nobody is going to give you 20 out of 20. But your marks would range between 15 and 18. That's what you're going to get. You may not get 18. It might be between 15 and 17 generally. But then you can get that if you write three and a half pages without spelling and grammar mistakes with proper valid arguments and structure. Moving on to the structure. What is the structure of an essay? Again, I'm throwing it open just so that I can correct you. What is the structure of an essay? How many paragraphs do you need if you want 20 marks? That seems to be a better question, I guess. Six. Six paragraphs. What is this? What is this six paragraph thing? So three. How would you do? How would you do? What is this three paragraphs? with the paragraph, no, sir. How would you divide that? No, no. We need the one introduction, Hello? then the contents and conclusion, like that. Hello. Sorry, can you repeat again? And the, the system we just stuck. Can you please repeat? <coughs> Yeah, you are asking me, sir. Yeah, yeah. I, I was asking everybody. What what okay, is the structure? Okay. So, no, what I feel uh, mm -hmm. that uh, the need not write uh, the count of paragraph is not needed. No, only thing we need to have introduction or if you can feel I have some subheadings uh, like content. Hello, your voice is breaking. I guess. Can you repeat okay. again after introduction? Introduction, the contents, Hello? the main body, main body. Hello. Sir, am I audible, Hello. sir? I think maybe you are problem, Is it again sir? a problem from my end? <laughs> Let me check. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you very much. Hello, yeah, yeah, I didn't hear you. After introduction, I couldn't hear a word. Can you repeat again? I'm sorry. Uh, the the main, main body, sir. Yeah. The main body, it can be one or two paragraphs, then the conclusion. This is what I feel. I don't know whether I'm right or wrong. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's okay. okay. You yeah. are you are right as long as you are corrected. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the way you need to look at it. You are correct as long as I correct you. <laughs> the multiple uses of the word correct, you see. <laughs> okay, so what I'm trying to say is, uh, yeah, so any other answers, any other observations? Okay, let's not spend too much of time on that. It's again a three-part structure, but not a three-para structure. You should have a well-made introduction. You should have five to eight body paragraphs and a conclusion. I repeat, introduction five to eight body paragraphs and again a well-prepared conclusion. There are a lot of people who end up writing two, three page long essay with a single paragraph or two paragraphs. Being postgraduate learners, you're not going to get anything more than five marks for that. Your answer may have every point that's required, but because you have written only two paragraphs, you will get only five marks out of 20. That's where you lose marks. So to be on the safer side, what you should do is, introduction and conclusion is somewhat the same as I told you in the annotation. I'll tell you the difference in a very short while. But when you write your body paragraphs, make sure you have at least five to six paragraphs, if not eight. And just because I told you need five to eight body paragraphs, don't go on making paragraphs. Please remember your elementary school days. Every paragraph should begin with a topic sentence. And the paragraph should be about that sentence or detailing that sentence. For example, if you begin a statement, uh, begin a paragraph by saying, William Shakespeare's plays are misogynistic, then that play should be about Shakespeare's plays where you can see instances of misogyny. If you say Hamlet is a procrastinator, if you look at Hamlet, and then that paragraph should be about at least a few instances of Hamlet procrastinating. 
You cannot have two or three arguments within a single paragraph. You cannot say Hamlet is a procrastinator. That's what critics say. But uh, I don't think Hamlet is a procrastinator. He is actually uh, quite sane. But at the same time, he procrastinates whenever occasion comes. So you cannot settle fourth and two with different perspectives or viewpoints. You have to stick to that first topic sentence and continue that paragraph. The second paragraph may or may not be a continuation of the same. You can have a different perspective. That's fine. It should go along with that. That's all. So that's how you have to divide your paragraphs. Introduction is simply about identifying the question or the category. If possible, give a bit more details about the author. For example, if the question is about Hamlet lacks an objective correlative, do you agree? If that's the question. Your ideal beginning of the introduction should be Hamlet is the longest tragedy written by William Shakespeare. His other tragedies include dash, dash, dash and dash. T.S. Eliot, a modernist poet, writer, playwright, critic, in his essay, Hamlet and his problems, accused that Hamlet lacks what may be called an objective correlate. If you want, you can add a sentence which justifies your answer. You can say, in fact, Eliot was right. Hamlet does lack an objective correlate or there are critics who disagree with Eliot and say that Hamlet actually has an objective correlate. So what do you do? You have identified the author, you have identified the work, maybe the age of the author, I mean the age in which he lived. You have identified the critic. In all cases, they won't be a critic though. You have identified the critic, his work and the concept. You have not elaborated on the concept in the first paragraph. Note that. You do not go on elaborating the concept in the first paragraph. For example, if the question is, uh, is Dr. Foster's a revenge tragedy? Or a moralistic play, I'm sorry. Is it a moralistic play? Substantiate. You'd say, Christopher Marlowe was an Elizabethan university wit playwright. Dr. Foster's is one of his best plays in which a Renaissance scholar is the protagonist of the play. And uh, you may say, you may pass a judgment saying that Dr. Faustus has a lot of similarity with the then prevalent morality plays, Christian morality plays, but then it differs in its own ways. You do not go on to explain what morality play is in the first paragraph. You'll do that later. So this is what your first para is all about. So the last sentence of that first paragraph is always identifying with the question. It need not always be the case. For example, if the question is, attempt a character sketch of Hamlet. You cannot have a last sentence like, I really like Hamlet's character. You cannot say that. So all that you can do is, Hamlet is a play by William Shakespeare. It's a tragedy. He has written four tragedies. And this is the longest of that. And Hamlet's character is deeply uh, vast and yet remains a Mona Lisa of literature. Maybe you can draw parallels with A.C. Bradley's character criticism and say that he attempted it in his work, uh, Shakespearean tragedy. That's something that you can do. In the second paragraph, do not jump into the answer. In the second paragraph, consider it as a short note. In the second paragraph, have a slightly longer paragraph or a half page paragraph where you detail the phenomenon. Whether it's revenge tragedy or morality play or whether it is, if in MAG3 for instance, if it is about um, epistolary novel, the second paragraph should be about what an epistolary novel is all about. When did it originate? Who is known as its creator? And what are some examples of those genre? What are the features of that genre? For instance, if the question is about comedy of humors, so you would, your second paragraph would be comedy of humors is a genre originated by Ben Johnson. His plays, every man in his humor and every man out of his humor are two typical examples of this. And the, the attributes of this is blah, 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 blah. This is what you're gonna do. For example, the play is, as it is in the case of the assignment, uh, attempt uh, or assess waiting for Godot as, a, uh, as an absurd play. So you'll have an introduction where you would say that Godot is indeed an absurd play. And then in the second paragraph, you would read out, you would write what I delivered yesterday. The term absurd was coined by uh, Albert Camus in the myth of Sisyphus, 1942. And it was uh, the other guy, um, 
എപ്പോഴാണ് പേര് ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ് ഗായ് ഇൻ നയൻറ്റീൻ സിക്സ്റ്റി ടു ഹു റോട്ട് ആൻ എസ് എ ദ തിയേറ്റർ ഓഫ് ദി എപ്പിസോഡ് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഓഫ് പ്ലേ റൈറ്റ്സ് ഇൻക്ലൂഡിംഗ് ബെക്കറ്റ് ഐണസ്കോ ഇയണസ്കോ ആൻഡ് ജോൺ ജെനെ ആൻഡ് അതേഴ്സ് കോളിംഗ് ദം ഓർ കാറ്റഗറൈസിംഗ് ദം ആസ് ദ തിയേറ്റർ ഓഫ് ദി എപ്പിസോഡ് ആൻഡ് ആസ് പോർ ദ ഡിക്ഷണറി എപ്പിസോഡ് മീൻസ് ദിസ് ആൻഡ് ദീസ് ആർ ദ ഡിസൈൻ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ദ തിയേറ്റർ ഓഫ് ദി എപ്പിസോഡ് സോ വൺസ് യു ഡൂ ദാറ്റ് ദൻ ദ റിമെയിനിങ് സിക്സ് ടു സെവൻ പാരാ ഡിവിഷൻ ബിക്കംസ് ഈസിയർ ഫോർ യു ടേക്ക് വൺ പോയിന്റ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ദി അതർ ആൻഡ് കീപ്പ് ഓൺ എലാബറേറ്റിംഗ് for example if you write that in waiting for, you know in a theater of the absurd uh, the sequences are illogical there is no time sequence there is blah 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 so your first paragraph would be right from the beginning there is no time frame the sequences are illogical spatiality and time is being tampered with both the characters do not know whether it's yesterday or today they don't know whether they met here or the other place their their, their memory is wavering then you go to the second point you say that um, the play is uh, lacks a structure it lacks a plot it deliberately plays with realistic tendencies tendencies so that becomes easier for you to uh, array these or to to order the sequence 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 the seven paragraphs are ready and you have a conclusion the conclusion may be as usual an observation a closing comment uh, an analogy an analogy with another play another character whatever you feel is convenient structure of the play the poetic language used if it's from murder in the cathedral you can speak about eliot's poetic mission poetic and religious mission for that sake observations so you can do all that while answering your essay questions so that's it about essays we are running out of time but as i told you we can stretch that as long as you have doubts so before i conclude my and give the session open i would like to add one more tip before i conclude there are a lot of learners who come and tell me after the exam that time management was a problem for them so there are two tips i would like to give you take previous year question papers at least try writing two mock exams from your home take a model question paper be prepared do not look at the book be honest to yourself don't cheat yourself spend 3 hours at a stretch right attempt answering the questions it's okay even if you do the other way you look at the question paper you study all the answers then take keep the books away and spend 3 hours it's okay with me but spend 3 hours at least twice before the exam so you will have an idea where you are spending so much of time where you are going astray or what keeps you engaged so that you can work on that while you are writing the examination second is a tip that i give spent i generally say spend double the time of the marks so that you can complete it you have four essays of 20 marks each 40 minutes each would be i mean yeah 160 minutes but then in that case you have to spend 5 minutes each for an annotation which is difficult it takes 8 to 10 minutes so what you can ideally do is take take 30 minutes each for essays so that becomes 2 hours take 10 minutes each for annotation so 40 minutes 2 hour 40 minutes 5 minutes for reading the question you will have 15 minute left to go back and complete the portions that's left so you will still get marks it's better than missing an essay or two wherein you compromise 20 to 40 marks here you have written everything you know within 30 minutes you will definitely have an introduction and say 3 to 4 body paragraphs so even if you come back at 2 hour 45 minutes you can write a say four sentence conclusion you will still get say maybe 13 or 14 out of 20 instead of 15 out of 20 you are only losing two marks there so there are a lot of my students who have done this and thanked me later i repeat the pattern again you begin with an annotation you write the introduction you write the body it's 10 minutes stop it there leave some space move on to the second annotation do that for four annotations at 40 minutes or 45 minutes move on to the essay the first essay take 30 minutes you may have only reached say an introduction and three to four body paragraphs stop it there leave some space maybe half a page a page move on to the second essay third essay fourth essay at 2 hour 45 minutes say 12 45 pm come back fill in the gaps write the conclusions you will thank me later when you get the marks well i have some closing comments left but before that the floor is open i have to thank you eventually but then before that if you have queries this is our last class 
we can spend some time on that if you have any queries so is it recommended to highlight um, uh, highlight names or author names or something like that that's up to you because evaluation, evaluation. is always, it's always individualistic. individualistic the way i look at someone's paper would be different from say an elderly teacher looking at the same paper again the mood may you know we should agree that a person's mood may also affect i'm angry i've fought with someone and i'm looking at your paper whatever you do i'd find fault in it so there is a lot of fate elements or luck elements going in that but then there is no steadfast rule for that don't do this don't do this there are people who say that this is a science way of doing it it is people with a science background who underline who highlight who encircle so there are people who say in language you get rid of this but then that's not bad because when you highlight there would be elderly people who would only read an introduction and conclusion so when they go through the body paragraphs they they skim through that so they see you underlined and they'll see the key terms procrastination objective correlative or antique disposition so they would feel that you know these things maybe your grammar would be faulty or you would have really bluffed but seeing these words they may give you marks possible a chance of fate so i don't have a steadfast answer for that it could also be your feedback you could comment on the classes that we've had maybe the experience that you had you can even turn your cam on i have still not seen most of you we'll bump on some road and you would be like hello sir do you remember me and i'd be like who are you yeah so you can have your cam on maybe we can take a group so photograph if you feel like i i have something to say yeah please uh, go yeah because um, we have so many things so many negative uh, mostly negative things to speak about this coronavirus pandemic and we have so many people lost lives and jobs and uh, all good things about living but one thing that uh, i have uh, really i i really want to thank is that online class because of this online class i i got to be in touch with this amazing uh, group and this amazing uh, class otherwise it would have never been in my in in uh, in, in, in long long time i mean uh, it, it it wouldn't have occurred to me i am here in odisha and i would have never been uh, a part of kochin uh, education center so in that way i'm really i'm really thankful to everybody out there and um, especially to you because you have been a constant source of inspiration for me to every day open my book and read and write and uh, again come back to literature and uh, i suppose to meet you some day and thank you personally that is a matter of fate though but i definitely look up to you and definitely you are one of my uh, very favorite teacher and uh, i i am really inspired by your way of teaching and your words and your Uh, and your and your energy thank you sir mr that's really so, so kind of you and i really feel honored and indebted for those kind words even though it's generally a customary statement at the end of every sessions i could also see through it and look at the genuineness or genuinity with which you have opened your heart so thank you so much for those kind words because kind words are really scarce to come scarce to come by but then yeah thank you so much and as i already as i generally keep telling you uh, stay in touch my my mail id is, is with all of you anandkrishnamurthy ak@gmail.com so mail me at any point of crisis or even if you are teaching somewhere you want me to have a lecture with your students if you want them to experience us i'm mostly open to that and uh, i'd like to interact with your kids as well it's like a lineage you know when i speak about drama i speak about i, I began my classes talking about dr madhukar rao i spoke about dr k a papanikya i spoke about dr late vc harris uh, these are all legends who have instilled the sort of a teaching skill in me or an enthusiast in me and this baton has been given handed over from one generation to another so i still remember dr harris telling this to me one day you know i am a teetotaler i don't drink but once uh, I, you know he was someone who was an alcoholic uh, well i don't know I, i should call him alcoholic he, he it was juice and wine for him so one fine day he was in a drinking party and we were together and the harris kept his hands on me and he said like see i see my lineage being carried over from you but mind you this is a responsibility that you have to carry forward because you are follow it is like a marathon you are taking this baton to another generation it's a huge responsibility so whenever i come to you or whenever i go to any batch for that sake that responsibility stays with me 
whenever i talk to you yes there might be times when i'm cramped over time or i may have some you know plans may not be working there would be technical issues or there might be times when i have to resort to summary there are times when i have to speed up but if you ask if, if there was a if there was a tool to look through to my soul and look at my intentions allegations apart if you could look at my soul you would see that my intentions are absolutely pure i really want you all to excel in your life and when i say i want you to excel in your life it's not about making a career but i want you all to go out to this world and become good lovely human beings that's what literature and arts is all about you go out you learn different sides of people their behaviors good bad evil worst and you come back and you are able to appreciate life and you are able to distinguish between rights and wrongs and sometimes you are also able to appreciate perspectives which may not be yours that pluralism is what literature is about and the, the height of that is drama theater is a rejuvenating experience if you have not done theater at some point you should do that theater purifies you it cleanses you if you have stress there is no bet no better stress must Honestly, I've been going through a difficult times too. I don't know how far I've shared this with you. Your former batch knows that. Uh, I lost my parents over the last one and a half years. My mother lost passed away in last July 2020, and my dad uh, passed away in June 2021. That is a month ago. And I've been trying to meet up with a solitary life, and I'm also struggling with some life decisions. For instance, I'm working in a college as I will I've already told you from Monday to Saturday, and I'm about to enroll for my PhD under a guide. and it's almost the list is almost pending it will come in a week or two and i'm confused whether i should you know delve into that full time or whether i should stick to the job because the pandemic times are difficult you know the salary at the end of the month is something that's so comforting so amidst all these agonizing things that we go through in our daily life the moment i step into your class even though virtually the moment i interact with you i forget all these things somehow i become someone like you i am a bit older than you maybe but then I end up being a kid. I become a theater person. Trust me. Yesterday, I had no plans to pull this table. You know, this was in my bedroom. The table that I was transacting was my dining table, where you don't have this tube light. When I enacted Tennessee Williams' glass menagerie, I felt like something is lacking. This lighting is lacking. This background is lacking. When I give you UNESCO, this is required. So I gave you a five-minute break. Maybe someone would have cursed me. Oh, this guy is spending wasting five minutes for us. but then i went out i'm not a bahubali or something but i pulled the table somewhere and in between somebody said that and it sheet was not available i i spared that with and then somehow i brought the table down i said this and somehow coincidentally this imagery came behind you know this is not my place i i stay for a rental and this is of my landlord and the swastika or the symbol of fascism is exactly what i was speaking against while delivering rhinoceros yesterday so there are some strange coincidences just say in hindi they say ittefaq yeah kuch cheeze ittefaq ho jati hai there are certain things that the universe universe conspires to bring into the setting and that is theater for you theater is such a rejuvenating thing all right and there is some comment yeah normally online class like one way love the whole section thank you so much thank you aisha and it's not about online classes aisha if you become a teacher i'd like to tell you everybody every single but i don't advise anybody this is my suggestion if you are planning to be a teacher school college wherever there are two things i'd like to tell you your intention is not to transact the lesson at least not in the 21st century everybody has google everybody has wikipedia everybody has the online resources they learn even if you teach well they would forget they will only go back and reread it the day before the exam as a teacher the two roles that we have to play is one guide them when i began my first class i gave you a lot of resources that you can look at yeah there are people who would go to epg patshara and say i don't need this guys classes anymore right but then i gave you all those resources i am not the omnipotent center you have to go and explore everybody this world is so vast so guide them to varied ways give them the suggestions motivate them promote them acknowledge them as they are not all 45 are going to become virginia virginia wool for william shakespeare someone would dance someone would sing someone would stay unemployed and still be happy that's which is perhaps or someone would be a day to day laborer would be going through troubles he would come to my class look at rhinoceros and say wow i had a one hour happily i had a one hour happy session that's my takeaway so be that teacher 
Communicate with your students. Don't teach. Don't lecture. Have this conversation going. Always put the you first. Are you liking my classes? Would you be interested in listening to this? Shall I tell you this? Shall I give you this new thing? This is what would hook them in. So put them first. You will survive. Second thing is the most important thing. Keep the class apart. Because this is online, I'm not doing it. Those who are there in RC Cochin would know. My classes generally begin with the question, are you doing well? Are you happy? Feel free to share with me if you have any problem. Or feel free to share it with any of your friends. Mental well-being is something that matters a lot. Talk to people. Solutions would emerge. Smile at your students. Don't laugh at them. Smile at your students. Encourage them. Simple, simple things. Good answer. Yeah? You, you, you have a valid point. That will make their life. That will brighten their life. They may not become William Shakespeare. But until they die, they'll have your name signatured on their hearts. And that's what we live for. And that's what we die for. Every batch, every batch apart, that's my pride. Whatever goes wrong, whatever goes right, at the end of the day, I can bet that I'll be remembered by my students for my benevolence. I'll be remembered for Hamlet. I'll be remembered for Beckett. I'll be remembered for Godo. I'll be remembered for Rhinoceros. Even if I die tomorrow, you'll remember those moments. And that's my takeaway. You give me a lakh rupees, that's not going to serve me anything. This is a takeaway. The way I slept yesterday, I should thank you. It was so peaceful. I never expected yesterday to, be to, to turn out that way around. But the way it turned out, I don't know how far did you benefit. Maybe you would have a complaint that this guy did not summarize waiting for Godo for us. Possible. Different people, different kinds. But then when I look back, it was fulfilling for me. It was soul filling for me. I slept well. I snowed and slept well perhaps. And I woke up with good spirits, which has carried with me till the evening. Until and unless the rain spoiled things. And yeah, so many comments coming in. If you want to unmute, you can unmute and speak. If not, I'll go through these comments. Um, yeah, much confidence to face the exam assignment. Yeah, one more thing. The day before the exam, don't study. Do all the preparations before. The day before the exam, watch some movie. Do whatever places you cook. Go out, hang out, talk to friends. De-stress. Don't stress. Again, half an hour before the exam, don't go through the books and you know spoil your brains. Just be cool. I was stuck after completing my degree. Four years passed by with a brain tumor. No, oh, that's tragic. How to study? Doesn't matter. Prasnangal varimpo. Prasnangal varimpo. Take the case of the classic novel, the American novel, The Old Man in the Sea. Santiago, an old man, has gone 82 or 83 days without fish. He goes again. Hope. Hope is the word that makes us live. And mind you, after that 84th day, if he comes back empty-handed, he becomes extinct from his community. He'll be evicted. Despite that, he goes. He catches a fish. By the time he takes it ashore, that fish is no more. It's eaten by sharks. But he says the popular dialogue, man can be killed, but never defeated. Man is not born for defeat. During this pandemic time, I'd like to reiterate these words. The disease can kill us. It can take away our beloved people. But our conscience, our spirit is of supreme quality. We are not born for defeat. Like Baranga said, ah, we will not capitulate. We'll just take the necessary precautions and try to survive. We'll live to speak about our stories to the upcoming generations. That's what we live for. As literature students, we live to tell our tales to the upcoming generations. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah, thank you all for your kind words. And, uh, you know, it's not about Malayalam. Whatever language you are from, whether it's Odia or Marathi or Bengali or Tamil, Telugu, to have a comparative analysis always helps. So, yeah. Any more queries or comments? Unmuted. Mute, unmute. 
Um, hi, sir. Yes, Uday. Can you hear me? Yes, Uday. Yes, please. I can see you as well. Glad uh, to see hi. you. Yeah, same here, sir. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually been a pleasure actually being in this classes. Uh, it's, you have been so spirited and passionate in your explanations. It's kind of like uh, you get that uh, feel and you can learn from it a lot. Uh, so thanks a lot for uh, such a session. So again, as I said, uh, because I had, I'm, I'm more in, I'm like been working for uh, in the field of work uh, from 2004. So again, I've uh, come back into learning now. So it's kind of a different experience for me uh, because it's been a while and I've completely forgotten uh, how that uh, time was. But now I'm getting that feel back, and it's kind of a pleasure. So, uh, so just just one. Uh, it's just personal. Uh, do you happen to be in uh, LinkedIn? Uh, because I search for you just to be in touch. Because uh, uh, LinkedIn... I I think I have an account, but I'm not active. I I don't, I don't even know what's the name of the profile. I might be there, but then it was way back in 2008 or nine or ten or somewhere. As part of my IT classes, I had joined LinkedIn, and I had recently yeah. updated it. I think, but I don't think I'm active in that. I'm there on Facebook oh, I... and there on Twitter. If you want to catch, okay. In Twitter you can Definitely. search. In Twitter you can search hashtag R J A K R J underscore A K. That's my ID. Okay. I do a bit, I, I do a little bit of voice auditions as well. So that's why this R J thing comes. I I wanted to be an R J, but a lot of a lot of houses rejected me in the last round. So then I myself started calling me an R J. That's it. Nothing much. But that's my Insta ID. Or else in Facebook you can type Anand Lalita Krishnamurthy. That's okay, my awesome. Facebook ID, and uh, Lalita was my mom's name, and you know I'm so fond of her, so that after her demise, I added her to my FB name, if not elsewhere. Uh, so if you want, you can. Yeah, that's there in the chat box. You can search for me there, and uh, thank you for your kind words once again. And age is not anything; age is just a number. At any point of time, yeah. you can come back. And I would like to tell this to all of you guys as we conclude. I'd like to reiterate and again and again tell you. You are not defined by your degree. You are not defined by the marks that you gain. At the end of the day, I would say, if you are a good human being, if you are happy, if you are able to survive, that's all that I would like to call a takeaway. You may yes, fail. Sir, it's okay to fail. Very true. Very all very that true, I would, sir. all that I'd like to say is, when the course began, if you think you could barely score forty out of hundred, aim for fifty out of hundred, score forty-five out of hundred. I am a proud teacher. That's all that I'm asking from you. I'm not asking all of you to score eighty. If you score well and good, but that doesn't matter. Even if I have a teacher who's got fifty-eight percent marks for his masters, but if you listen to his classes, you will seldom realize that this guy has such a low mark. Because marks are subject to a lot of things. You have a terrible headache. You have a fever. Your hands are trembling. You have lost somebody near to you. You had a vomiting. You won't be able to write. You have a pain in your wrist. You won't be able to write. You will miss a couple of essays. You will still get forty out of hundred. That is not a parameter to assess you. That's why I say learn, don't study. Whatever you learn comes with you. The reason why I can lecture Hamlet without any preparation is Hamlet is in my soul. The teachers who have done that to me have made me learn Hamlet. And that's why when she said, Sharmista ji said that after my classes she feels like going back to books. I feel delighted because that's what my teachers have said and done to me. When you listen to their lectures, you feel like going back to and reading those books. Unfortunately, because they lived in a pre-technological era, we don't have their lectures much. You can Google them. Dr. Madhukar Rao, a great Shakespearean scholar. Dr. V. C. Harris. He was Harris. my teacher, sir. He was oh. my teacher. Madhukar oh. Rao, Maharaja's college. I yeah, he, he he's a yeah. legend. He's a legend. <laughs> long, long, I long mean. back, sir. That is in eighties. I envy you. Back then, he would have been a youngster, a handsome youngster. Yeah, he used to share that stories with me. You know, he used to share that stories I'm with us. I'm in my late fifties. I'm late fifties and still yeah. I'm a student. This is but, my seventh uh, master's degree. Yeah, but I can bet that you cannot look back at his classes without reverence. He was yes, a true legend. Yes, sir. We yes, we don't get such teachers nowadays. It was he who right. made me a teacher. The moment I attended yeah. a lecture by him. I decided I could this feel is my the calling. Difference, sir. I could feel the difference because of him. You are like this, so I it's think uh, you are. Too... A yeah, very good. Anyway, very good. So, Sad that uh, he is no longer amidst us. If he was yeah, amidst us, he would have come to yeah, our class and taken hand. His son also retired from Kochi. Yeah, yeah, Prabhu. Yeah, Ajit, sir. Yeah, yeah. Ajit, Ajit. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he was a legend. Yeah, he was. He really was. 
so go google these people dr vc harris what else yeah um, dr k i papanikar who is also a poet then um, dr madhukar rao there are so many of those legends who are really really wonderful i am nothing yeah, in front of those people then why we are not adding their uh, books for our academy they, they didn't write they didn't write the they didn't write they didn't write they didn't write they didn't write so, that's one quality no, that i see with all these have, people no, i could connect with myself as well they have added uh, indian novels <laughs> no indigenous yeah, dance yeah. uh, but, but all you know they are all they were all orators and maybe they prefer not to write they were too lazy to write harris in fact has written a lot dr vc harris yeah. is also a voracious translator So you would find a lot of books by Harris in the web, but then. Uh, Arbindo was there, no, sir, from uh, yeah. India. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and so, so is the case of Dr. Vargis Abraham. Dr. Vargis yeah, Abraham, yeah. who also retired from Maharaj as a principal, he's an exemplary orator. Literary criticism and theory, the wasteland. His classes are exemplary, but then he has not written a single thing, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Thank yeah. you so much for such a lovely class. the hamlet still in fresh in memory thank you now when we read that we'll get an idea i was even thinking how to start because no idea because all british language british poetry how to write all these things now i think uh, it's all clear okay that's why i said i know that i will, yeah. I, I will get pass marks because we <laughs> working class we can't uh, afford much time in uh, reading yeah, yeah. like students isn't it sir that's so why i, I say I what what, also, yeah. what matters at the end of the day is whether you know nine stories whether you yeah. pass or not yes. what do you learn from those nine stories how yeah. far does it help you in your life yeah correct correct simple if you correct. start writing your assignment from today that means you have gone past hamlet hamlet cannot yeah. do that <laughs> okay, okay yeah so, so that's your take away thank you all right so, so guys if you don't have, yeah same here if you have nothing else to say we'll wind it up if you have anything to say the floor is still open This is our last class until next year. Next year we will meet again in the second year. I will be teaching with teaching the paper, mandatory paper, MEG five, literary criticism and theory. There is no escape from me. If you are if you are planning to continue, that is. But otherwise, especially people who are not from RC Cochin, if the classes become offline, then yeah, we won't meet again probably in this platform. But then yeah, if there are no closing comments, then we'll wind up. Okay, yes, sir. all right guys so thank you so much once again for your pa- for your patience for the time spent and uh, i'd like to apologize for any problems from my end especially you know in an online class theater cannot be uh, reproduced in the exact effect so uh, apologies for all that but then thank you for bearing with me patiently for 20 hours and i wish you all great success may you be blessed may you reach greater heights wish you all the very best and like she said at some point of time we'll meet somewhere this world is so small and round and whenever you come to cochin feel free to let me know we'll meet and have a cup of coffee or lunch and we'll sir, have where are you experience. teaching sir where are you teaching currently i'm teaching in a college called rajagiri college of social sciences kalamsheri okay, okay and i'm also okay, teaching in rc cochin rc cochin i i was there for a couple of years oh, okay, uh, as okay. well so currently i'm also working in rc cochin kalur and uh, whenever you come feel free to ping me up maybe we'll meet and have okay. some good time all right more than the class we enjoyed the way you, the narration and your language everything thank you thank, <laughs> thank, you, thank you thank you so much thank, thank you, you i owe it to my great gurus not mine nothing is mine yeah, yeah. of course of course so thank you. you so thank you all of you have a great life stay in touch see you bye